Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops. Our latest video delves into a shocking lawsuit involving corrupt cops sued for vehicle searches during traffic stops. Subscribe, like, and share to spread the message of justice. Let's discuss the consequences of unethical behavior within law enforcement. Join us to make a greater impact and challenge others to engage in this conversation. On August 9, 2018, Tian Li, an 18-year-old, took his mother's car for a spin, heading towards a nearby convenience store. However, his journey was interrupted when Detective Kevin Crawford from the Louisville Metro Police Department in Kentucky pulled him over for executing a wide turn. It's worth highlighting that Mr. Lee indeed made a wide turn, and Detective Crawford's initial reason for the stop is valid. I got him. What's going on, man? Yeah. You know what I'm stopping you for? Yeah, yeah. Man, when you turned on here on the Dixie, uh, right, 18th Street, yeah. you turned in the far left lane, you're supposed to turn in the right lane. You see those two lanes? That's the reason why, man. Are there any weapons in your car? No drugs? Do you have your ID? No, you ain't got any guns, right? You good, man. I'm sorry? Yeah, work today. Oh, you got to speak up with all this. You say something about work? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and check it, man. Let's go ahead and check it. Okay, hello, man. Awesome. So, do you still live on Lewis Moore's Drive? Yeah. What part of town is that in? Park Duval. Oh, it's Park Duval? I got you, man. Awesome. Do you have your insurance, too? That's a crazy ringtone. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm pulling over. Hmm. That's cool, man. Give me a favor, put your hands on the steering wheel. Did you open it up the door? Yeah, man. Do me a favor, grab your phone and your wallet, stick it on the seat. Why? Because I'm telling you, or it's going to fall out when you get out of the vehicle. Why are you taking me okay. out of the vehicle? I'll move it up here for you. Mama, they right. taking me out the vehicle. Don't hop out? Get out of the car. They, they telling me to get out, out the car now. And that's the reason why I didn't want anything on you. I don't want to break your phone, brother. Right. You don't have any weapons on you, do you? No drugs? Nope. Awesome, man. Turn around, put your hands on the car for me. feet. I don't have, I even did anything. Detective Crawford had a legit reason to pull over Mr. Lee, but it wasn't the only reason he did it. This falls under what they call a pretextual stop, allowed by a 1996 Supreme Court case called Ren v. United States. Basically, it lets cops stop any vehicle if they have a good reason to suspect a traffic violation. This ruling has shaped modern policing, making officers stop cars for small violations, hoping to find bigger charges, but it unintentionally supports pretextual stops and maybe even racial profiling. Detective Crawford works in the LMPD's 9th Mobile Division, dealing with violence and drugs, not just traffic stuff. Councilman David James, a former cop, criticized these stops, saying they're off-target and morally questionable. He compared it to casting a wide net while fishing, suggesting there are better ways to tackle violence. Why are you checking me? For? I didn't say you did anything. So, so you don't why, have any. Why are you taking me out the car? Do you have any drugs, weapons on your? I don't. Like I told you that. You mind if I check? The first time I do mind. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna make sure you don't have any weapons. Okay. No. Yeah. Back in 1968, the Supreme Court made a big decision in the Terry v. Ohio case, saying that cops can do a pat down search if they have a good reason to believe someone might be armed and dangerous. But even though the guidelines for law enforcement training stress that this suspicion should be based on specific facts. 
A lot of officers don't follow this and just go with their gut feeling. In Mr. Lee's case, the officers are doing a pat-down search without any valid reason to think he's carrying weapons, which goes against the legal justification for these searches. Take a step up and get it. Down. down. Quit doing the clutch in your fist thing. So, what's what's full for it? The only day I got off, I just want to go home. Okay, well, you'll go home. Well, we're going to try to college right in front of us. Do me a favor, hang tight. I'm going to talk to my camera partner, okay? Hey, what happened? you close my door? No. Why? I can't leave you to go close the door. Okay. Quit with the attitude. He's not giving you an attitude, and I'm not giving you an attitude. I understand. We deal with violent crime all day, every day. We're going to stop 30 more people after you. As soon as we get down here, you'll go home, okay? If you're wasting our time and we're wasting your time, I'm sorry for the small inconvenience. We're allowed to get people out of the car. Your, ch your heart is beating through your chest when you're on the phone with your mama and you're narrating to your mom. Mom, I stopped by the police. This is where I'm at. They're getting me out of the car. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. When you do all that, it's the same thing that people do yeah. when they're trying to hide something from the police and they're trying to take the, si the situation off of it. Just like you're looking back at my partner over and over and over again, like you're waiting for him to see something or for him to do something wrong. It's 2018, young man. We all wear body cameras. It's recording all of it. It records your audio, my audio. It records all that. So guess what happens? When, if, if, and when, if there was something in that vehicle and we go to trial over it, guess what? The jury your attitude okay so bring it down there's no point in it we're here for you man the situation described points out a serious issue of racial disparities in how the louisville police department conducts traffic stops and searches as reported by the louisville courier journal the analysis of over 130,000 traffic stops from 2016 to 2018 shows that African Americans are pulled over more often and are three times as likely to be searched compared to white drivers. Even though African Americans make up only 20% of the city's driving age population, they represent 33% of stops and a staggering 57% of searches. Interestingly, African American drivers are searched 12% of the time they are stopped, a significant difference from the 4% for white drivers. However, oddly enough, law enforcement finds illegal items in searches of white individuals 72% of the time, compared to only 41% for African Americans. These numbers indicate a troubling trend, raising concerns about whether the Louisville Police Department is prioritizing the protection of young African American men. There's a shooting every day. It's crazy. It's sad. It's ridiculous. Ain't nobody been nasty to you at all. Had you, uh, were you able to coordinate him or anything? Ready? Do me a favor. We're standing right over here away from the dog. Like right where the Ford ended. In 2012, the Supreme Court ruling in Florida v. Harris upheld that when a drug detection dog signals at the outside of a vehicle, it grants an officer probable cause for a warrantless search inside. Despite claims of drug-sniffing dogs' reliability, studies reveal their accuracy can be as uncertain as a coin toss. A 2011 investigation by the Chicago Tribune disclosed a mere 27% success rate of local K-9 units in identifying Latino drivers. While clinical research backs the effectiveness of these dogs, real-world data on K-9 units often doesn't align. The Tribune's findings suggest mishandling by officers, leading to an erroneous focus on rewarding positive alerts over actual detections. The practical use of drug-sniffing dogs remains dubious, especially given the unreliability without expert handling, a skill lacking in the majority of law enforcement. Was it positive? Put your hands on your back real quick. Put your hands on your back. I'm not going to have you run really like that. There's a, the dog indicated on your vehicle. I don't know what's in your car. But like I said, I don't want you to run. So you're still just being detained. You're not free to go, but you're not under arrest at this time. I just don't want you to go anywhere, okay? But I'm not going to fight you 
and I'm certainly not going to chase you. I had to chase some guy last night, and I haven't recovered from it. So I'm not chasing you today, okay? That's all it is. Hello. I'll come talk to you. Just do me a favor. Hang out by the telephone pole. I'll, I'll come talk to you, okay? Let's okay, come over here for me. There's nothing in there. Okay. Cool. Let's, can we do me a favor and come back over here? I'm just giving you a reference for you this way okay. you can see, man. Okay. Right? I'm, not, I'm the detective who pulled him over. Yeah. Okay. So basically, he committed a traffic violation right what in front of me. What did he do? He conducted an improper turn on the 18th Street. I, 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 I was on the phone with him the whole way. Okay. He, he said no. you were following him the whole way. Okay. There was no improper turn. Okay. Well, and he didn't give you Luckily enough so. for you, ma'am. Luckily enough for you, everything was captured on body camera, okay? No, luckily enough for you. Oh, really? But okay. He didn't give you permission okay, to search We don't phone. need his permission, ma'am. Yes, ma you do. We had a positive indication by the came out, okay? Oh, my God. So, ma'am, you guys are more than welcome to watch, videotape, whatever. Just do me a favor. Give us some room and stay over here, please. Ma'am, please stay over here. I'm You're trespassing on private property right now? It's for sale. Ma'am. Stay over there, please. No, if you okay. approach my traffic stop, I will take you. Ma'am, if you approach my traffic stop, I this will take you to the specific distance to keep while recording a traffic stop hasn't been clearly defined by higher courts. However, the International Association of Chiefs of Police's Officer Safety Guide for Public Recording of Police Activities advises recording parties to maintain a reasonable distance from officers conducting enforcement or related duties. It's important not to obstruct officers from carrying out their duties. I've created a detailed video discussing recording traffic stops, which I'll link in the info card above. Mr. Lee's mother has every right to record this encounter as long as she doesn't physically disrupt the proceedings of the stop. My car. I do not I care. I don't care either. You know what? Okay. Great. <laughs> Ma'am, sir, can you do me a favor and talk? She's standing back. We're standing back. Can you go? I'm giving you a reference point to stand at, okay? I'm it's right over here by the hill. Do you see where I'm pointing at? No. Can we step back a yes, that would be amazing, right. please. So we just step back. I'm not here. going nowhere. Hey, uh, can you do him? Can you do him? This person. Pockets. Got like a little change pocket right there in the front. Why do you have, if you don't mind me asking, why do you have like this negative view towards the police? What's the deal? Whatever, what's ever happened in your life personally where you like, you can give me a good explanation? Absolutely not. Really? When I graduated, I got a good job. Right. I got a graduated with three, four, I think I scholarship. I ain't never did shit in my life. I've been in the house all day. So what's what's the, the problem? Like, why are we in this situation? The reason they find themselves in that situation is due to the established reputation of the police. These officers, through their actions, are reinforcing a negative perception that doesn't necessarily require a personal bad encounter to understand the widespread issue of poor policing in America. Shockingly, statistics estimate that an American citizen is killed by the police every seven hours, with African Americans facing a disproportionately higher risk of being shot. Mr. Lee, a young African American male, resides in a country where both law enforcement and the justice system are recognized for their discriminatory practices. Given this context, it's completely understandable for him to feel both frustrated and anxious. Huh? We didn't, do, we didn't do it. We made a traffic stop for your violation that you did. I don't want to talk. And then you went up here with it. Huh? You did the entire time. We don't know who you are. I don't know that you graduated and you got several scholarships and that you have a good job. I mean, I don't know. It's not like I have a x-ray vision that says, oh, this is who's in this car. He's good to go. But if you don't want to hear it, that's fine. You can continue with your negative view towards me, I guess. 
I just figured I'd try to understand it, but that's fine. Huh? I'll never understand. All right, sir, here's your ID back. All right, you've got a court October 2nd for improper training at 7 p.m. From Center West Jeff, do you understand the reason why you stop? All righty, have a wonderful day. Appreciate it, guys. Detective Crawford gave Mr. Lee a ticket for a traffic violation after not finding any weapons or drugs during a search. However, the ticket was later dropped, leading to an internal investigation. Mr. Lee filed a lawsuit against Chief Conrad Commander Hibbs and five officers, accusing them of biased policing and unconstitutional stops in black neighborhoods. The lawsuit claimed that Chief Conrad and Commander Hibbs were aware of orders for aggressive policing, resulting in biased practices primarily targeting black males. There's an ongoing internal investigation. The Louisville Metro Police Department, particularly the 9th Mobile Division, received an F for racially motivated pretextual stops, including K-9 searches without consent, turning minor stops into unjustified searches. The 9th Mobile Division's strategy, supported by Chief Conrad, focused on targeting young African-American males for minor violations under the guise of reducing crime. Despite claims of concentrating on high crime areas, the division's practices revealed biased policing, affecting the relationship between Louisville citizens and the local police. Disbanding the 9th Mobile Division and the lawsuit's outcomes are expected to bring accountability and compensation. Mr. Lee is praised for keeping his cool during the encounter, refusing the search and taking legal action. He is acknowledged as a victim of racial profiling by the 9th Mobile Division due to his race, age, and gender. Mr. Lee's calm approach and legal actions highlight the issues with specialized police units and local law enforcement agencies, earning him recognition for raising awareness about their impact on communities. August 2022, Kenny McDonald rapped sharply on the window of a police cruiser stationed outside the Central Police Union headquarters in Phoenix. You help out something? What do you need? There's a bunch of people that you help over. You guys help people, right? What do you need? Do you help people? I'm asking. What do you need? No, I'm asking you, you help people. I'm asking you what you need. Oh, I mean, there's a bunch of people over here that are dying in the heat and they don't have any food or water. Could you tell me about that? Over there for them. Oh, there, there is, but yeah. you guys just hang out in parking lots. But I thought you guys helped you people. Need something? I thought you guys were the ones that helped people. I know, I need your attention. Okay. Yeah, so I got it. you're obstructing police oh, I operations, am? yes. Oh, so, you I need am? to get out of the way of my view. I'm, well, you're not even in it. I was knocking on your window to get your attention. Yeah, I get in my way. It's called obstructing police operations. Oh, yeah? I'm going to a call right now. So, if you don't need anything, I wasn't you in need your way be. until you stopped, you dumbass. Okay. <laughs> Officer Jay Sleeper exploded with fury the moment Kenny casually insulted him. Swiftly, Kenny found himself forcefully apprehended, restrained in custody, and unceremoniously confined to the back seat of the cruiser. The sudden action caught him off guard when he inquired whether the officer's reaction was provoked by the insult. Officer Sleeper contended that it was due to Kenny's lack of compliance, despite the absence of any explicit instructions. Officer Alvarado joined in the arrest, though the unlawfulness of the act was glaringly apparent to anyone, even those with no prior experience in such matters. A short while later, Officer Sleeper alleges that Kenny was impeding the investigation. So what was it exactly I did? I already told you, you're obstructing police operations. But the car wasn't stopped until... Section 13, 2402 outlines the act of obstruction, characterizing it as the deployment or menacing use of violence or physical force with the intent to impede, impair, or hinder a public servant in the execution of their duties under the guise of their official authority. However, it is evident that Kenny neither employed force nor uttered words that could be construed as a threat. Despite this, the officer proceeded to conduct an unwarranted search of Kenny's bag, referencing an entirely unrelated suspect involved in a firearms-related incident. This move appears to be an attempt to rationalize the unjustifiable arrest. Kenny was completely unrelated to the firearms incident, 
yet Officer Sleeper requested a one-roll police jargon for a mobile fingerprint scan. Shortly after, Officer Sleeper reappeared and engaged in a conversation with Kenny. Well, what did I do exactly? I've already explained it to you. Well, no, I'm just curious. I didn't understand. What didn't you understand about you're now blocking police operations? But the car stopped my talking. You can talk all you want. I'll listen. So, you were driving, and I knocked on the window. Yeah, you stopped me. Yeah, yeah. Yep. and I had a question. Yep. Yeah. And then you stopped. And then I had to go around the car and talk to you. Yeah, see, when you came up to my car, okay, one, you're posing a hazard to me driving because I might hit you. Number two, oh you gosh. you stopped me in the middle of my work. Okay? You see how that works? But don't you see how if you were asking to get out of the front of your car, I could have done it, but you didn't. You said you're obstructing I did car. ask you. I asked you multiple times well, if there was well, something well, you needed. Well, 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 can you get out of my way in my car? I guess I did. I said you're in the middle of the road and you need to get out of the way. The cop insists he instructed Kenny to relocate, but there's no evidence of that. Following a conversation with Kenny, the One World unit rolls in, and during their arrival, they deliberate on the suspect's description mentioned in the call, attempting to unjustly link Kenny to the case. Report of an irate individual with a gun at the Holy Center location. Update. You say receive it, and then it came out as, or the next update was, suspect has left the area on a checkered bicycle wearing a hat. Kenny's ride wasn't adorned with any racing stripes, and he wasn't donning or carrying a hat. That's not a checkered bicycle. No, but he's got a checkered shirt. That's probably what they meant. The detectives retrieve an image of the alleged perpetrator, intending to juxtapose it with Kenny's features for identification. You were at the polling center earlier today, weren't you? No, no, you don't want to talk. Interesting. <laughs> what did he do to you guys? Um, so... Um. Before the responding officer could utter a word, the sleeper abruptly terminated the recording. With all cameras now shrouded in darkness, they propositioned Kenny to surrender his fingerprints. A staunch refusal ensued, prompting the officers to resort to force. Despite Kenny keeping his hands clenched in fists, the officers attempted to pry his fingers apart, leaving lacerations in their wake. Eventually, they wrestled him to the ground, causing injuries to his jaw and impeding his breathing. Two officers with callous disregard exerted their entire weight onto McDonald, leaving scraping injuries across his bloodied face and nose. At this juncture, fear gripped Kenny's soul, but he was mercilessly subdued. The officers once again trampled on his Fourth Amendment rights and forcibly seized his fingerprints. Subsequently, they fabricated charges by manipulating his description to align with a non-existent firearm suspect. Throughout the ordeal, body cameras were intentionally toggled on and off, clandestinely concealing their transgressions against Kenny. In a feeble attempt to obscure their violent acts, they even tried to clean up his blood-stained face. Kenny was slapped with charges of trespassing, obstruction, and aggravated assault, despite the absence of probable cause for any of the allegations. In a sinister turn of events just before his arraignment, a resisting arrest charge was whimsically added, only to be swiftly dismissed. Between August and September of 2022, a resistance report underwent scrutiny by supervisors, including three sergeants, a lieutenant, and a commander within the Phoenix Police Department. Astonishingly, not one officer, after reviewing the footage, deemed the arrest unlawful or acknowledged the use of excessive force. All these officers are now defendants in a lawsuit, though the status of any disciplinary actions remains uncertain. Two officers, including Chris Toriano, are identified on the Brady List, a roster featuring some of the nation's most corrupt police officers, notorious for untruthfulness, criminal convictions, and excessive force. Toriano, with a sordid history of brutality, shot a man in the groin with a pepper ball during a protest in 2017. Shockingly, he was even awarded for such acts. 
another officer implicated in this saga, faced two misdemeanor counts in 2015 for allegedly brutally assaulting his wife and son amid accusations of infidelity. On June 10, 2019, Roland Edger, a father and his stepson, Just Newby, were at his auto body shop in Huntsville, Alabama, when he got a call from one of his longtime clients, Kajal Go, who owned a red Toyota Camry. The car was mainly driven by Mr. Go's wife, who worked as a teacher at a local church. Mr. Go informed Mr. Edger that the car had broken down in the church parking lot and wanted Mr. Edger to fix it. He also mentioned that the keys would be waiting for him at the church's front office. Soon after, Mr. Edger and Mr. Newby arrived at the church, got the keys, and began working on the car. While they were working, one of the security guards on duty observed them and promptly dialed 911 to report suspicious activity. Thirty minutes later, Officer Krista McCabe of the Huntsville Police Department responded to the scene in her patrol car and made contact with the duo. So far into the encounter, we can observe Mr. Edger and Mr. Newby diligently working on the car as instructed by the owner. Now, the security guard's suspicion could be justified, as he wouldn't be aware that the car owner had authorized them to work on and repair it. However, Officer McCabe, within her rights to investigate, was promptly and clearly informed by the duo that they were hired to fix the car, which had evidently broken down. However, this is where the situation takes a darker turn. Watch as Officer McCab suddenly adopts a tyrannical stance, possibly succumbing to a power trip. Take a break from me real fast and y'all have driver's license or IDs on you. I ain't gonna submit to no ID. Listen, you call the place right now. Listen, I ain't got time for this. I'm all worried. I don't mean to be meat rude or nothing. Okay, no, you, you do need to give me your ID no, or driver's license. In the video, Officer McCabe abruptly instructed Mr. Eater and Mr. Newby to halt their actions and demanded that they present identification. This action alone raises numerous concerns regarding whether Officer McCabe was lawfully executing her duties as a law enforcement officer. Firstly, according to the Alabama Code section, the 15th of May 30, a sheriff, deputy, or constable within their respective counties can stop any individual in a public place whom they reasonably suspect of committing having committed, or about to commit a felony or other public offense, they may then demand the person's name, address, and an explanation of their actions. While one might argue that Officer McCab had reasonable suspicion to believe Mr. Edder was engaged in criminal activity, it's essential to note that the duo provided a clear explanation for their presence and actions. Officer McCab simply needed to verify this information. Requesting identification was irrelevant to this verification process. Moreover, Officer Perrod had also arrived at the scene by this point, and both officers were unnecessarily escalating the situation. 
Their actions seem to demonstrate an abuse of authority. I don't want you to run run me and and it, uh, for, for nothing. Are you to refusing me to give? Are you refusing I'm, to give me your ID? I'm telling or you, if you call this lady on her on, on this Step car. Step over that one. Come on, man. See y'all. See here's y'all player. You're playing right now. No, we we, we don't got time for this. We really don't got time for this. This is me. Man, y'all don't understand. Why you don't understand the law. I do. I do. I got three officers. Three officers. Three officers. Go. Y'all know. Turn it the other way. Now, Chris, my right, my my my, my left arm up there. Man. Get my left when I dashed you, sir. All right, I'm on. Do your cuff. Yeah. And you on, twist man. your wrist yes, around. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm gonna give you my ID. I have my. Hey, man. Will you go stand in front of my car for me? ID. Come on, give my ID. Man. No, we'll get your ID. Keep your wrist like that. All right. All right. They're good. They're good now. Yeah. Nope. Look. They're good right now. They're not too tight. Okay. You're under arrest for what? obstruction. I didn't do nothing. All right. So if you resist any further, you will also get charged with resisting arrest. Listen. You understand? Notice that Mr. Eater was actually giving a logical explanation. Even though he had already informed Officer McCabe of their activities, he was even willing to let both officers speak to the car owner. However, we just witnessed him being handcuffed and arrested for obstruction anyway which is simply outrageous. Keep in mind that a police officer in Huntsville, Madison County, or anywhere else in Alabama can make an arrest in any of the three situations below. One, if the officer has an arrest warrant issued by a judge. Two, if the officer witnessed someone committing a crime. Three, if the officer has probable cause to believe someone has committed or is about to commit a crime. A noteworthy point to highlight is that probable cause means there is actual information leading the officer to believe the person has committed or is about to commit a crime. In other words, the officer has more than mere suspicion. Judging by this, it's evident that Mr. Edder was unlawfully arrested and both officers obviously had malicious intentions from the start. This tyranny persists as you will soon see. I give my ID, I'll tell you what's going on. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to get a customer's car here. I'm in a rush. They, my shop's unlocked over on Governor's Drive right now. Man. Do you want my ID? Where's your ID? It's in the car, I'm sure. I thought it was in my pocket. You're all down in my pocket for no reason. I, I said my ID is, either, is in my car. Go over and walk in and get my car. Okay, well, he's car. still going right to check there. your pocket because I don't know what's in them, all right? Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get placed in my car without knowing what's in your pocket. Now 47, total. Now 47, total. Now 47, You shut up. Is that how you talk to someone? Is that all officer supposed to talk to someone Yeah, like we're here doing a custodial I, search I, on you. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. What y'all need to do is call Mr. Gold Patel right there in this office right here and hand me the key. That's I already what you need to do. explained to you. All right. Uh, man, I am such a rush. How long has it been, man? I've been trying to get over and get the call back. And then here, there, there it is. Okay. Look at it. 38.1 frame drive. That's it. That's it right there. Is that all it's possible? I think she's having problems with her landlord. I got changes and stuff like that. Come to the 1020. Pick them on the other side. All right, come on. This ain't necessary. This ain't necessary. You it is necessary. I called what? obstruction. I, I see, listen, I didn't do anything. I, listen, is he under please, arrest? please, yes, listen, please he listen. Is. I've please. already told him that he's under arrest. This is ridiculous, man. You know what I'm saying? She, she, I, look at, I didn't do a crime, but she's trying to arrest somebody for not doing a crime. She's trying to arrest me for obstruction. Of, for what? I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. Huh? That's what I'm saying. She's down. I mean, listen, Sit please, down. please listen. Sit down. Well, that's what I'm saying, man. I got my shop unlocked over there. I'm trying to confide. Man, please listen Sit to me. Sit down. Down in the car. Oh, this is, please listen. No, you don't want to listen to us. I'm trying to explain to you. I'm, sir. I'm trying to explain. Okay, once again, uh, just have a seat right there for me, okay? Do you have, no, I can use your ID. Thank you. Okay, 
so. All right. He, he is going to jail. All right. Yes. Okay. Well, that, that sucks. I mean, good people go to jail, too. Good people, bad people, if they break the law, they break the law, they go to jail. All right. I asked him multiple times for his ID or driver's license. Officer McCabe flat out tells Mr. Newby that even good folks can get locked up, showing she really doesn't like the public. It's pretty clear she doesn't respect the people she's supposed to protect. Officer Priya also tells Mr. Edger to shut up, which again shows they're not acting professionally. But despite all this, Mr. Edger gets thrown in the back of a cop car and searched without proper cause, violating his Fourth Amendment rights, which protect against unreasonable searches and seizures. Even though they clearly cross the line, the officers still think they did nothing wrong. Yep, okay, then he refused. I asked him again if he was sure that he was refusing to give it to me. He confirmed that he was refusing to give it to me, and at that point, he is obstructing an investigation, and he is going to jail, all right? I'm out here because I got a call stating that that vehicle, okay, is an employee here, and you guys were inside the car, and you're not supposed to be inside the car, okay? And that's fine, all right, but I'm still here making sure that you're not doing anything illegal. But it took me now, how long have I been out here? Like five, six, seven-ish minutes, okay? I'm just now getting to tell you why I'm here because of his actions, all right? I'm just now, I'm just now getting to explain what I'm investigating because he deterred me from doing that, all right? You know, his, that's his car. He owns the body shop from Governor's uh, Rye uh, Shelf Stakes Auto Collision. He owns that. I just, I've been with him, look, I just, I own a business too and paint business. I'm sorry. You know, I mean, he, he owns the body shop. I swear to you, I'm not lying about nothing. My name is Glenn. Hi. Hey. 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 Y'all call. Okay. So, whose car is it that is an employee? It's Miss Dola. She works here. Which car daycare. is it that's hers? The red one. Okay. Is she here? No, ma'am. They've already went home for the day. Okay. Well, a pimp, what's her last name? I'm not sure. Is it Perez, maybe? Can you, does anybody know what it is? Because I'm just a security guard, and all I seen was them jacking up a car. Miss Dola, do you know her last name? I don't know if you seen it. Man, y'all have a bunch of goodies? Yeah. <laughs> I just got some Taco Bell, and now I'm out here. Yeah, the way that he was acting. No, he, um... He actually refused to give me his identification, so that's why he's going to go. Um, I mean, it may be completely legit that he is out here just picking up the car and it's with her consent, but when he tells me no, that he's not giving me his identification to identify who he is, then that's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as absurd as it may sound, Officer McCabe just admitted that the sole reason Mr. Edger was arrested was because he refused to identify himself. She even acknowledged that his actions with the car were irrelevant. She was willing to entertain the idea that he had permission to work on the car, but proceeded with the arrest solely because her ego was bruised when he declined to show ID. At this juncture, Officer McCabe was essentially doing what she should have done prior to confronting Mr. Edger and Mr. Newby. For the next few minutes, she investigated the situation and attempted to ascertain whether the pair were authorized to engage in their activities. However, the presence or absence of permission was not grounds for their arrest. This underscores the extent of Officer McCab's tyranny. We all have her number. Yeah, if you can uh, get in touch with him to get a number for her so I can talk to her and make sure these gentlemen are supposed to be.
Where's your phone at? You have his phone still. His what? His phone. Yeah, it's gonna be in your your password. His wallet and all his cash. And stuff. Four twelve. Three, three to nine. I'm sorry. Are you from twelve? Just uh, swipe, swipe across it. Maybe, yeah. Okay. All right. Now start, start it. Uh, start it. Start at the bottom center. Bottom center. Go up all the way. Go down. Go to the right and go all the way down. Yes, ma'am. Now cursive out on the arrow. Arrow. Keep going. Keep going. Yes. All right, uh, go over to phone. Now go down to Codril. Uh Actually, I talked to him today. Um, Codril Club, right there. Codril. Codril Sale. He's the man that owns that car. Codril. He County. He does have a Mr. Meal warrant there. They hold my extra here. What was what was her name again? The the, the teacher. He got, he's talking to the man. Hello? He's talking to the man. Hello? Yes, sir. This is Officer McKay with HPD. Um, does your wife, yes, does your wife own the red Toyota Camry? No, she has come home. What was that? And what's your name, sir? At home. She's at home. Andrew Pryor. Okay. Okay. So you don't know who the names are. Okay, I got her. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm gonna hand it off to uh. Winda. Winda, real quick, okay? Now 47. Now 47. Hello. Yes, sir. Um, your wife, though, does she drive the red Toyota Camry? Yes, ma'am. Yes, she does. Yeah. Okay, do you know who it is that's supposed to be working on her car, picking it up? Edgar? Marvin Edger. It's remarkable how simple it would have been for Officer McCabe to solve the situation and reach a logical conclusion if she had conducted her investigation without insisting on ID. The pair might have already fixed their car and Officer McCabe could have enjoyed her Taco Bell. Despite the confirmation that Mr. Edger had done nothing wrong that would require him to show ID, Officer McCabe persisted in arresting him as she felt she had no alternative at that moment. Okay, it's Roland. Roland is supposed to come check the car. Okay, this is Officer McKay with HPD. Okay, we got a call of a man working on your wife's car, and I was out here and I needed to verify that this man was supposed to be working on her car, all right? Okay, that, that's all I needed to know, was that he was supposed to be working on her car, all right? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Okay, he's good. You you're going to jail for obstruction of justice. There's no crime committed. There, there is. You refused multiple times to identify yourself to me. After this, Mr. Eater was taken to the Madison County Jail where he underwent processing and booking. I 
Yeah. No, hey, I know we're here now, and it's a pro and, and you're not happy with me, but I'm very oh, sorry. Okay. Look, it, I, I get I'm that you're out. stressed. I'm, all right, I get stressed too. But for future reference, I'm gonna put all your cash with your other cash. All right. My boss is gonna. He's gonna be what in the world, man? I am gonna keep your keys until you get booked uh, what in. What right? is that? That one. Step? It's a big massive thing. Yes, Like I said, all I would have done when I got there is get y'all's ID to see who you are, all right? I would have called. I'm not going to butcher his last name, all right? I'm not even going to try. I would have called that male, Oh, oh yeah. whoever car that was, okay? That's how it would have been. I would have called him. I would have verified that you're supposed to be there with the car, and I would have said, y'all have a great night, all right? But There was no way that you wouldn't have reconsidered after that. No, time. sir. If, I, if we do that, I mean... Uh, then would, everyone would, would you would you take a moment and just let me talk to you for a second here though? I mean we we're already at the jail. All right, let's come over here. I'm not have a record. I never have a record, man. You just could tell I'm not this kind of person. Who's door right there? Four four fourteen. Whenever he opens the door back up. I do apologize. Yeah. Just look, future reference, like I said, if a cop asks you to identify yourself, just go in and you know, get your you know, ID. You know, you know what, uh, looking back. And then when you said, you know what, look at what? I don't need my name ran. I didn't want my name ran. Red flag. Okay? Well, I know, I understand. No, I, understand. I mean, that's I not, understand. Understand. unless you had warrants, no well, you one would even know that you your didn't. name got ran. I didn't know I, that I, you I, have warrants. I don't know. I, know, I was, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's because you saw That guy looked me right in the face. Like he knows I'm right here. Maybe, 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 maybe it's because, I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Ultimately, Mr. Edger was charged with obstructing governmental operations. However, this bogus charge, as expected, was dropped soon after. The officers were not held accountable. Then, on November 18, 2022, Mr. Edger filed a lawsuit against the Huntsville Police Department. A judge wrote that while Edger certainly committed no crime, officers McCabe and Peria had arguably, and only arguably, probable cause to arrest him for one offense. Based on the foregoing reasons, Edger's motion for summary judgment is denied. The defendant's motions for summary judgment are granted. Edger's claims are dismissed with prejudice. In other words, the judge granted the officers qualified immunity and dismissed the lawsuit. However, upon appeal, federal judges rejected the officer's argument that they had probable cause to arrest Mr. Edger, quoting the Alabama Code we've already discussed, which basically dispelled the confusion. As of the date of this recording, the case has been sent back to the district court, where Mr. Edger will likely be awarded a big settlement. On September 2023, two men affiliated with the Unprofitable Servants Ministries were peacefully standing on a public easement, preaching their message outside a church. Neither of them caused a disturbance. In fact, they didn't even directly engage with anyone entering or exiting the church. They simply held a sign, and one of them used a megaphone. Eventually, the Clover Police Department received a complaint alleging that the two men were being too loud and causing a disturbance. Essentially, it was a noise complaint. Officer Robert Bloon, who was on patrol duty at the time, responded to the scene. It's important to note that Officer Bloon was there to investigate, not to make an arrest. This was because a mere complaint didn't necessarily indicate that a crime had occurred. Hi. Do you have a permit? Do I dwell in the truth? You need to see your ID, please. Is well, there a reason what? why, sir? Yeah, loud noise complaint. Yeah. Well, do you have a noise ordinance coming? We do. Okay, what is it? I need to see your IDs, no, please. we're asking for the noise ordinance. I'm asking you for your IDs. Sir, I'm asking you a question. I'm not, first off, I wasn't talking to you, I'm talking yeah. to you. Well, if, yeah, I need so to see your I, identification. Why you need to see my ID for? Yeah. Because you're creating a loud noise disturbance, so you, I need to see your ID. Do you uh, have the ordinance number, though, sir? If we don't give you the ID, will yeah. you arrest us? Yeah. Absolutely. Officer Blund came in hot, not looking to sort things out, but to stir them up. He was all about confrontation from the get-go. He singled out Mr. Aaron, demanding ID over a noise complaint. Now let's get real here. According to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the First Amendment, people have the right to speak their minds, but the officer seemed more fixated on the noise level, which sparked the whole mess. Okay, without an orders number, sir? Yeah, at least. So You're interfering with my investigation least, right now. Remove yourself from my investigation or I'm gonna put you in jail. At least show us our ordinance. 
you want to why, so, why are you so hostile, sir? This I'm is not wicked hostile. in the sight of God. This, is, is, this is, uh, is an abomination. I need to see your identification or you'll be placed under if arrest. You'll be placed under arrest. You're both making too much noise out here. We have a the compliance because we have we have. A I don't need to show you the code to arrest you on it. Now give me your ID or go to jail. Those are your two options. Officer Bloon basically told Mr. Aaron that he had to show his ID or he'd get arrested. But whether Mr. Aaron and his buddy Mr. Christian did anything wrong is a bit tricky. In Texas, making noise louder than 85 decibels can be considered disorderly conduct, but only if you've been warned by a cop or a judge beforehand. Since the guys didn't get any heads up before the officer showed up, they can't be busted for that. Even if they had been warned, the cop would need proof, like a noise measuring device to back up the claim. Plus, according to another law, you're only required to give your name, address, or birth date to a cop if you've been lawfully arrested and they ask for it. Since the cop's demand for ID was unconstitutional, Mr. Aaron and Mr. Christian were totally in the clear to refuse. Bible says, Sir, I need to see your ID as well. You're making too much noise now, too. I have. And we're not. And we're not using. I'm telling you, I need your ID. I'm not using case. I'm using my voice. I don't care. I'm exercising my freedom of speech, sir. Right, I get that. So you're gonna arrest me for exercising my freedom of speech? You can't. Excuse me. It's in the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. You're gonna, you're gonna arrest us freedom of speech. If we're exercising our freedom of speech on a public sidewalk on the east. The problem is, is that we have a noise ordinance. Okay. I'm using my voice, sir. It doesn't matter if you're using your voice. You can still be too loud. And people can still complain about this. So you actually were standing on the no, property this here. Is not, I'm not going to argue the sir, point. This is an easement right here. Your ID, there sir. There has to be an easement. The Bible says. And if I don't get to you, you're going to jail. Yeah. So what's it going to be? In the lake right. of fire. This is so two awful, sir. Two twelve. Give me another unit over here. Now keep in mind that both of them were indeed standing on a public easement. According to the Legal Information Institute, a public easement grants the public the right to use certain streets, highways, paths, or airspace even though these areas are owned by others. In a public easement, the landowner must allow members of the public to access a defined area of their land for the purposes stated in the easement. Public easements are meant for the enjoyment of the entire public. However, at that moment, their presence there wasn't even a concern highlighted by Officer Bloon. This changes soon, though, as you will see. The primary issue so far has been the noise. Under Section 13021, noise nuisance is defined as any unreasonably loud, disturbing, or unnecessary noise that causes material distress, discomfort, or injury to persons of ordinary sensibilities. Exercising freedom of speech, as Mr. Aaron and Mr. Christian were doing, was arguably not unreasonable or disturbing. If anything, Officer Bloon could have asked them to lower their voices politely and cordially instead of escalating the situation. We could complain too, right? That's absolutely right. You need and, to see your ID. Would they be arrested if they didn't show you their ID? What are you going to complain on? That is too loud. We don't like it. Who's who's too loud? I'm just saying, in the instance, if somebody was playing music or we can. Oh, absolutely, too, absolutely. It's the same thing. All right, you have I'll be right back with you. Sir, I need to see your ID. Sir, I'm not doing anything unlawful. Uh, actually, you're standing in a public roadway. No, actually, so where's the easement? Because I can't stand on their property. The utility lines right there. So if I'm telling you I need to see your ID or I'm going to put you in jail. Okay. One of two choices. I need my ID, but if you're not, if, so you're... I need to see your ID okay. now. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Okay, well, I got the all on film because we can take... This Good, I do too. That's fine. We're not doing nothing illegal, sir. We're not doing nothing illegal. What you're doing is unlawful. You're violating our, our freedom of speech. You're violating our freedom of speech, sir. Thank you very much. Come on, stand over here with him. You're used by the devil right now. You're wicked, sir. Well, what if I tell you I don't believe in God? Well, you're going to go to hell. Good. You're going to burn in hell. Join me, won't you? You're gonna, that's why you're being used by the enemy right now. Yep. If you don't believe in God and you die in your it's sins, man, you're going to go to hell, man. And Jesus died for you, man. He cares about you. You know that? He loves you so much, man. Texas, three, four, he loves six, you seven, so eight, much, eight, man. He zero, cares four, about Aaron you so Urbanski. much, man. He cares about you, man. He died for your sins, man. He rose again on the third day. Do you believe the gospel? Hang on a second, please. Do you believe the gospel, sir? Texas 44002893 Leonard Gaffney. 
See, if this wasn't real, you wouldn't see the spiritual warfare right here. I don't have any idea where you can park. I'm, I'm dealing with something else over here. Because the truth is not being told inside this lukewarm congregation. This is a lukewarm congregation right here. Hey, shut up. Jesus Christ is coming back with vengeance. I'm and fixing to put you in jail on a noise ordinance violation. Jesus Christ is coming back to destroy sinners. Turn around, put chains behind your back. You're under arrest. You can't you arrest him just for speaking. Really? For use for my speaking. freedom of speech. Absolutely, I can. Oh, I got a noise yeah, ordinance yeah. complaint. Lawful, I'm using my freedom of speech. Sir. Turn around, it's place your hands behind your back. I'm using my freedom of speech. Turn around, place your hands behind so your back. So you arrest me for using my freedom of speech? I got a noise ordinance okay. complaint. So you're gonna arrest me for using my freedom of speech, sir? I'm about to. I got it all on camera. Hey, just hey, take see my this right here? Yeah. I got it right here too. Hey, go ahead and take my camera. You call Connie. Yeah, no. No, no. If he's gonna arrest me, use my freedom of speech. That's fine, man. He wasn't gonna arrest you. No, I am fixing to arrest okay. Turn around, patient. Yeah, let, let me go ahead and get That's my camera, man. man. Let me go ahead and get my camera. That's unlawful, sir. All right, hey, turn around, place your hands behind your back. That's fine, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead and take a picture. Nah, thank you. Take a picture, man. Hey, I'm going to get my phone, man. Hey. No, you're not going to give anybody anything. I'm going to get my phone. Get my phone. In a minute. In a minute. In a minute. In a minute. Arrest me for using my freedom of speech sir, on a public sidewalk? Well, it's a noise ordinance violation. That's the problem. This is against the law right here. He just said he hates God. He doesn't believe in God. And he's arresting me? This is what's coming, sir, to America. Preaching the truth for Christians. And this, this is, what, is coming. This is what's going to happen. You guys are not ready for the tribulation. Yeah. When we get persecuted, the Christians are going to be outlawed. What are you going to do? You're going to fight for your life? You're going to try to save your family? Hey, Mike, go ahead and take a picture, man. This Woe week. unto you. You're not going to be ready. All of Who do you want to give your phone to? To, to, to him right there? Hey, then. This is, this is what's going to happen. Can you take the phone? Yeah, the phone's five, five, six, nine. Go ahead. This is sad. Oh, you got it. Whoa, whoa, Jesus Christ is about to. If I didn't bring no law, man, he's arrested. You're arresting the servant of the Lord? I wasn't even using an application. I'm using my voice. As we've just witnessed, Mr. Christian was arrested for breaking the noise ordinance, but as we've previously mentioned, none of those rules were relevant here. Also, pay attention to the fact that initially, Mr. Aaron was the primary individual officer Bloon was concerned with, and Mr. Christian was even instructed to step back from the investigation. Keep a close eye on this. I need to see your IDs, no, please. We're asking for the noise ordinance. I'm asking you for your IDs. Sir, I'm asking you a question. I'm yeah, not, first off, I wasn't talking to you, I'm talking yeah. to you. Yeah, at least. So You're interfering with my investigation least, right now. At least, Remove sir, yourself you, from my investigation or I'm going to put you in jail. So, it's already pretty outrageous that Mr. Christian was somehow in handcuffs. Note that to arrest a suspect, a police officer must have probable cause. Probable cause exists when facts and circumstances within the police officer's knowledge would lead a reasonable person to believe that the suspect is involved in criminal activity. However, no criminal activity could be articulated by Officer Blanc since none even occurred. By extension, this was a violation of Mr. Christian's Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Regardless, this is where Officer Blanc completely exposes himself as a tyrannical individual who was arresting a man for no reason at all, likely out of retaliation because both men initially refused to have their rights violated. Officer Blanc was simply on a power trip. Well, see, so here's the thing. After I told you to stop because I had a noise ordinance violation, you any ordinance number? You really I don't need to give you an ordinance yeah. number. But that's yours. Go ahead, Danny. That's mine. This yours? Okay. There you go. Go ahead, man. Just not even see a picture, man. Feed him please, man. Feed him please. Arrest him for preaching the truth, man. So here's the deal. Like I told you when I first got here, I had a noise ordinance violation complaint. You were actually on that megaphone when I got here, okay? I've told you to quit. You got off of it. That's why you're not going to jail. See, he kept going. That's why he's going to jail. I wasn't on the megaphone. Hello. Officer Blanc's silence speaks volumes. He understood that Mr. Christian hadn't committed any wrongdoing. Mr. Aaron was the one on the megaphone, and if that was the issue, Officer Blanc should have addressed him instead. Yet, he now observes as Officer Blanc secures Mr. Christian in the back seat of his patrol car, 
and promptly attempts to allege another offense on top of the noise ordinance violation. He kept yelling. Yeah. This guy kept yelling after I told him to stop. That's why he's going to jail on a noise ordinance violation right now. Okay. No I've asked you to stop and you did. At this point, they've asked you to leave the property. This isn't their property though, sir. There has to be an easement. This is our freedom of speech right here. This is our first amendment to exercise our freedom of speech on a public sidewalk. If there's not a sidewalk, there's an easement where the utility line is. You're doing something unlawful right now because you hate God, because you don't believe in God, sir. Is that why? Yeah, that's what you said. What if you don't believe in God? This is. I asked him. Right? Okay. okay. All right. Let's go to my car over here. Go ahead, take your mic. That's fine. This is wicked. Lukewarm Christianity. Lying lips are abomination to God. This is abomination right here. Slide in. Let's find out if the. Uh, find out if the congregation wants a criminal trespass warning issued. Sir, I wasn't on their property. Uh, actually, you were. No, I was not. See, the how criminal trespass on warning only deals with curbs and stuff yeah. like that. We don't deal with any of the... Yeah, but I was not on their property, you sir. You actually were. No, I was not, sir. You I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to tell you you were. That's right. You know what? The Lord is my shepherd. Uh, All right. Slide over this way just a little bit. Yeah. I didn't run the... This guy in the gray. Um, yeah, and also find out if we want a criminal trespass warning issue. We want a criminal trespass warning issue. But to me, this is church property. I don't see any sidewalk. Well, yeah. If the curb gets tore up, we're the ones that got to fix it and pay for it. So. How far onto the property did it come? Uh, Andy was out here with him, too. Right here. He was right here. He was right over here. He was right over here. They were both within six feet. Yeah, off the roadway. Yeah, off the roadway. Did they go? Yeah. Because he asked where they were. So you'll get that from him. I want her to do it. Oh, oh, yeah. But I'm gonna run him up to the jail. Yeah. Okay. Did they say yes, criminal trespass? everybody these two criminal trespass warnings i'm going to issue him a criminal trespass i'll write everything up if you'll just get my deed and okay. somehow mr christian and mr aaron were on the brink of receiving a criminal trespass warning even though they hadn't technically set foot on private property yet it was another baseless accusation we were familiar with all right All right, well, I'm gonna let you know uh, on video that you're being issued a criminal trespass warning. You are never allowed to set foot on this property over here again at any point in time again in the future. If you do, you'll be arrested on the spot. Do you understand that? Uh, actually, you were. No, I'm not gonna argue that point with you. Little something you might take into consideration for future reference. Just because you can do something and have the right to do something doesn't mean it's always a good idea. Okay. You're on. Uh, you're on the end car. Um, I think we're going to have an appropriate charge of criminal trespass um, because they're on the church property and a representative of the church um, asked them to leave the property and they failed to do so. Okay. So additional charge of that? Yes. Um, I think. Uh, I'm not okay for that. I'll get the written uh, statement on that, but it seems appropriate to me. Uh, everything it, it clearly appears to be church property here. Okay. I will do it. So, did you ask McQueen to get a statement? Uh, I asked McQueen to criminally trespass those other two. You didn't ask him to get a written statement? Not from the other two. No, not from not from those guys. No. All right. I'm going to let you go. All right. Bye. Hey man, I know how you want it to. I know you want it to be in your favor and you want it to be your way, but it's just not going to be that way today. Well, we'll see what we'll see what the judge feels about that when you take it to court. Yeah, where is it? Oh, absolutely, it still is. It's recording right here on me. Officer Blunt continued to exacerbate his situation by consistently misinterpreting the law, the very code he was entrusted to uphold rationally. However, he confidently faltered in his execution. 
been done. <laughs> so you admit, did you know there's a noise ordinance? Actually, there's not. There's a noise ordinance. There's not a decibel meter, a decibel level in there. And I don't know if you guys think that cops have to tell you the ordinance number and all that stuff. If you do, you've been watching too much TV. I don't have to tell you anything other than you're under arrest. You actually were on their property, but I'm not going to argue that with you. You can you can tell the judge how you feel about that and the easement and everything else. Easement only has to do with utilities and drainage and that kind of stuff. It's still that person's property, whether or not there's an easement or not. You weren't putting any kind of Ill, of uh, power, lighting, or, or drainage. Therefore, you don't have any right to be on that property. Walk on the side of the road right there. Well, there's no sidewalk there, so yeah, I guess that's what you do. You ever been to this jail before? You ever been to any jail before? Well, there's there's also the use of loud or profane language, and he was doing he was doing loud language in order to uh, harass and annoy these people, and that's what that do what. Mr. Christian has been booked at the Johnson County Jail, and there have been no additional updates as of the date of this recording. On the evening of December 3rd, 2021, Officer Teddy Dyer, Officer Candace Miller, and Sergeant David Merrick from the East Ridge Police Department in Tennessee responded to a request for a wellness check at Haley Sherrod's residence. Upon arriving at the house, they discovered Haley's mother, Ang Sherrod, sitting with her son, Devin, inside a vehicle parked in front of the house. Officer Dyer approached the vehicle from the right-hand side of the passenger seat, and the ensuing interaction was recorded on his body camera. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, do you live here? Um, my daughter's living here. Is she? Yeah. In the, in this, is that 893? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Right, hang on one second for me, okay? Is something wrong? Well, we got called to check on a child. What well, child? I don't know. They didn't tell us. They just said do a welfare check. From when? Like... What do they say? I don't know. We'll go up and knock. Is that your daughter coming now? Yeah. What's her name? Hey, going up to the door. Well, how old is the child? Two years old. Is there a two-year-old that lives here? Okay. I bet it was, uh... Four Mike three, seven golf four. Why are you running my tag? Because I smell marijuana. You smell marijuana? Yes. Because you smell marijuana that gives you the right to run my tag? Not only that, I'm going to search your car. You're not going to search anything. Yes, ma'am. No, you're not. I promise you. You are not going to break not my only, rights right now. You're about to get your rights in the back of my car. Well, if that's what you want to do, because you, one, you're going to get real when you do. Because I haven't done anything. I haven't violated any rules or anything. You can sit there and talk to me and, and to that tell I, you're going to search I, my tag. I am going to search your car. And you're running my tag. I am going to search your car. I'm not doing anything but sitting out here waiting for I my daughter care. to come back out. I don't out. care. Your car's going to be searched. And if you interfere with my search, I will put you in the car okay. and I will take if you to you jail. Okay, you go ahead and you violate my rights then. Okay, put Let's your hands do on that. the car. You violate my rights. Put your hands on the car. In a state where marijuana isn't legal, Officer Dyer claims he smelled weed during a traffic stop and wants to search the vehicle. The state's courts usually see the smell of marijuana as a valid reason for a search. However, a recent case argued that with hemp being legal and having a similar smell, just the odor might not be enough for a search. Still, until higher courts or the legislature say otherwise, the smell of marijuana is probably still considered a good reason for a search. Also, checking Monsieur Sard's license plates is legal under the Fourth Amendment, as courts consistently say there's no expectation of privacy in a license plate number. So, Officer Dyer's actions, wanting to search based on the marijuana smell and checking the license plates, would likely be seen as okay by a court. What are you you're gonna put? You're, you're I said, put, me? Your put your hands on the car. Put your hand back up. Hey, don't you put your. No, I'm not going to record this. Please. 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 Please.
Hey. Jordan, Jordan. Don't do me right now. He just banged my. Oh my god. Oh my god. Shut up. Oh Roven. He's pulling my hair. Get in the car. Get nothing. in the car. Oh my god. I can't. I'm too big. Sucks to be you. Stop. Get in the car. I didn't do anything. You're a woman. You're going to treat me like that? You're going to get tased. Get in the car. Listen. Get in the car. Yeah. A woman named Miss Gerard is suing the police, claiming they used excessive force during her arrest. According to her lawyer, Officer Dyer allegedly slammed her against a car window, hit her head, handcuffed her, and then mistreated her further by pushing her against a police vehicle and pulling her hair. Officer Simmons arrived and reportedly used a taser on Miss Gerard, who had difficulty complying due to her size. Officer Simmons left out this information from her report, stating that Miss Gerard refused to comply, leading to the use of the taser. The assessment of whether excessive force was used is essential considering the Fourth Amendment's reasonableness standard outlined in the Graham v. Connor case. Factors such as the severity of the alleged crime, the immediate threat posed by Miss Gerard, and her resistance to arrest need to be considered. The argument is made that the force used, especially the tasering while struggling to enter the police vehicle, may be considered excessive given the unclear reasons for her arrest and the possibility that her level of resistance did not warrant such measures according to established legal standards. Shut the f up before I take your f to jail too. You know Get back. She just got run out of baby. You do not go away. Arrest her. Girl, do not push me. What is wrong with you? Who did it? I need to know who did it. Who did what? Who tased my She mama? didn't get tased. Get tased. Then why was her taser going off over there? Checking the fire, I guess. So then why was her taser? How about you worry about you? We'll worry, worry about, about your mama. mama. I don't really give a Y'all are violating our rights right now. What, which one? You want to act like a big girl? You're going to get treated like a big girl. So I drive son to her mom to get her in the car. Uh, other than that, she's perfectly fine. Just drive son? I'm just making sure. Yeah, no, she, just drive son. I, but I did it twice. I'm emotionally invested. Can I take her? Yes. Well, we, we, we were thinking. No. I love it when you do this. <laughs> Go to the hospital. I'm going to come. I'm talking. I'm, I'm telling you what's going to happen, okay? You are very rude. Taking mom for disorderly yeah. conduct, resistance, stop, halt, frisk. They are now so Officer Dyer explains that he's escorting Miss Gerard to jail due to disorderly conduct and resisting arrest under sections 39, 117, 35 of the Tennessee Code. He quotes the code, stating that an individual violates the law by engaging in fighting, violent behavior, or causing public annoyance in a public space. Furthermore, refusal to follow official orders for public safety, creating hazardous conditions, or making unreasonable noise interfering with others' lawful activities is also a violation. In this particular situation, Officer Dyer claims that Miss Sherrard's actions didn't seem to meet the disorderly conduct criteria. Despite speaking assertively, she didn't raise her voice until just before Officer Dyer grabbed her. There was no engagement in violent or threatening behavior, creation of a hazardous situation, or making of unreasonable noise. In fact, Officer Dyer's voice was noticeably louder and more aggressive than Miss Gerard's. I promise you. You are not going to break my only, rights right now. You're about to get your rights up in the back of my car. You're, you're I said me? put your hands on the car. You're arresting me for Put what? your head back up. Hey, don't you put your... Officer Simmons described an incident involving Miss Gerard in a police report, claiming that Gerard got aggressive and disruptive when informed about a vehicle search. The report hinted at disorderly conduct charges but body camera footage raises doubts about the likelihood of a guilty verdict. The analysis points out a lack of proper justification for a resisting arrest charge, citing specific sections of the Tennessee Code. It delves into the definition of force and references a past case to highlight actions that could lead to a resisting conviction. Despite the statute stating that the legality of the stop or search is not a defense, it also allows for the use of force in self-defense against excessive force by law enforcement. This information suggests that Ms. Gerard could potentially defend against a resisting charge 
by arguing that the officers used excessive force during the arrest. It could just, the car could just stay here. I mean, I'm we'll her see. daughter. Um, and I Please say. don't, like, it's already, like, clean vote. Because, like, I Let's want to walk out of jail, and I just want to take uh, and I'm and I feel for you, and I'm not trying to cause you no headache. You just got to understand, we have a job to do. Also, step out. Let's talk. How old are you, man? I'm 18, sir. 18. Mm -hmm. And I'm a man. I'm like you, why you got to hit my mom like that, bro? You gonna keep the? Uh, I tried. I tried. You see, I tried to I'm talk to you, being, like you like a man. I tried to talk. Why you got like that, bro? Get in the car. Like, I tried. I tried to talk to you. I tried. I tried. I'm not your bro. You see, I tried. You see, I tried to talk to you. How old are you? 18. He's old enough to take a ride. He goes to the big boy jail. Listen, I want you to know how this would have went. Ma'am, I'm gonna have to search your car. Okay. I didn't find anything. Guess what? Have a good night. Miss Gerard got arrested and the cops searched her car, but they didn't find anything illegal. Her child was okay. Miss Gerard was taken to the hospital, cleared, and charged with disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Charges against Angel and Devin were dropped in April 2022. In July 2022, the family sued, claiming constitutional violations and state law breaches. They settled with the city in September 2023, but the exact amount for Angel and Devin wasn't disclosed. Miss Gerard's daughter got $110,000. The lawsuit highlighted a pattern of police misconduct in East Ridge. Officer Simmons got fired for using force, and there were no reported public actions against other officers. East Ridge Police got low grades for unnecessary force. Miss Gerard was commended for challenging the search's legality. The situation questions the constitutionality of the search, considering the lack of evidence. The family was praised for seeking accountability through the lawsuit, as East Ridge faced multiple civil rights cases involving police misconduct. On June 1st, 2020, Greg Keim, a resident of Plano, Texas, was pulled over by K-9 Deputy Chelfie of the Bernie County Sheriff's Office on Highway 71, just outside of Austin, Texas. Mr. Keim was driving a rental car with California license plates. After Mr. Keim pulled over, Deputy Chelfie exited his police vehicle and approached the passenger window of Mr. Keim's rental car. Mr. Kaim was told by a deputy that he would get a warning for his driving, but the specific traffic violation wasn't mentioned. According to Section 545.363 of the Texas Transportation Code, drivers shouldn't drive so slowly as to impede traffic, unless it's necessary for safety or in compliance with the law. The code allows authorities to set minimum speed limits if slow speeds consistently cause traffic issues and drivers must adhere to these limits if appropriate signs are in place. The U.S. Supreme Court, in the 1981 case of United States v. Cortez, emphasized that police stops require a specific and objective basis considering the overall circumstances. The Seventh District Court of Appeals of Texas, in the 2000 case of Richardson v. State, ruled that going 10 to 20 miles per hour under the speed limit without impeding traffic doesn't justify a stop. Applying these legal principles, it appears that Deputy Chelsea's stop of Mr. Kime might not be justified. Since there was no posted minimum speed limit, and Mr. Kime's driving didn't seem to impede traffic, a court would likely find that the stop lacked reasonable suspicion for violating Section 545.363 of the Texas Transportation Code. Hey, how you doing? I'm Deputy Chelsea, the Sheriff's Officer. Are you okay? Yeah. Because you're... 60 feet of road. Well, you're driving 60 in a 70 zone and you keep braking. It's consistent. Well, I want to I wanna keep the distance, safe distance uh, from the car. If the car in front of me is... There was no car in front of you when you were doing that no, at the time. there was a, like a... Uh, I'm keeping the distance. I'm At one time, there was a car in front of you, but most of the time, you're driving. No, I was I was following the line okay. of the cars. Okay. And I always like to keep the safe right. distance. I'm just making sure you're okay no. because someone you, someone doesn't go 60 miles per hour typically in a 70 zone and brake all the I time. Saw you, I saw you behind me. Okay. Uh, and I know that you're driving with that speed. I thought maybe there is some sort of. Uh, road repair or something like that, so everybody is driving pretty much the same speed. Okay. And that's why I was uh, All following right. the normal pace. Well, you're just going to get a, a warning. Do you have your driver's license and insurance on you? Yeah. 
Okay, can I see that, please? Deputy Chelsea asked Mr. Kaim about the rental agreement for the vehicle during a traffic stop. The discussion refers to legal principles established in the 2015 Rodriguez v. United States case, which states that a prolonged traffic stop, beyond the initial reason, can be deemed unlawful. However, routine inquiries like checking the driver's license and inspecting the vehicle's registration and insurance are considered acceptable. While there isn't a lot of specific case law on inspecting rental agreements, examples like the 2019 United States v. Leslie case and the 2011 State v. Hollins case suggest that courts generally allow officers to inspect rental agreements during routine traffic stops. This is seen as similar to other permissible inquiries outlined in the Rodriguez decision. The court's reasoning is based on the need to confirm the driver's authorization to operate the vehicle. In summary, based on these legal precedents, it is likely that a court would consider Deputy Chelsea's questions about Mr. Kame's rental agreement as reasonable during the traffic stop. Where are you headed to today? Spicewood. Spicewood? Actually, uh, Briarcliff. Briarcliff? We have a, I had a car broken. Like what, my car, the Honda Odyssey. Uh huh. Uh, I left it at the car repair shop. Okay. And because of that, uh, I put my car. Where do you live? Normally. Well, I mean, my my your address. Plano. And where? Texas. Plano, Texas. Yeah. What brings you this way? As I said, we were on vacation here. Uh huh. I'm with my wife, and my car broke on the road, so I left it at the. Car repair shop in uh, Marble Falls. Okay. Colonial car repair shop. What? Well, so, what brings you to this part of Texas besides that your car broke down? As you said, we were vacationing for a couple. Of well, days. Well, yeah, I understand that, but where? Right to. Okay. All right. It doesn't live in. Right? Okay. That that's what I was trying to get to. So this is a rental car? Yeah. Do you have the rental agreement? It's in the email. It's in the email. Did you rent the vehicle? Yeah. Under your name? Yeah. Okay. Deputy Chelsea pulled over Mr. Kaim, suspecting him of driving under the influence. The legal basis for the traffic stop is discussed in reference to the 2014 Navarette versus California case, which emphasizes the need for a police officer to have a valid reason to believe a driver has broken the law for the stop to be considered lawful. The Navarette decision pointed out certain driving behaviors, like weaving and crossing the center line, as indicators of drunk driving. Researchers from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration identified over 100 driving behaviors predictive of impaired driving, narrowing it down to 24 cues through field studies. Driving at a slow speed along with other issues like maintaining improper lane position and judgment problems is considered a sign of intoxicated driving. However, the scenario notes that driving at a slow speed alone might not be enough to establish reasonable suspicion, as shown in the Richardson case where a court ruled that driving 20 miles per hour under the speed limit without additional reasons does not justify a stop for driving while intoxicated. To sum it up, the analysis suggests that Deputy Chelsea's stop of Mr. Kaim may not be justified by reasonable suspicion of impairment, based on legal precedents and the specific circumstances outlined in the scenario. Yeah, yes. Safer than 70? Safer than 70? You're supposed yeah. to go to the speed limit t most of the time. It's the maximum. The speed limit is the maximum 70. Okay. So if I'm going 60, it's uh, below the maximum. And also, if that's what I, I was following the uh, cars in front of me and I was trying to keep the safe distance. Your driving behavior was consistent with someone that may be intoxicated, which is why I stopped you. During a traffic stop, Deputy Chelsea told Mr. Kayim to take a seat in the police vehicle and issued him a warning for driving too safely. 
Deputy Chelsea asked about Mr. Kaim's background, residence, employment, and physical characteristics while wrongly stating the need for documentation. The warning may be linked to meeting traffic stop quotas rather than actual administrative requirements. Despite Deputy Chelsea receiving a C- for poor discretion, it's unclear if Mr. Kaim filed a complaint or plans legal action. Many police departments have quotas, contrary to their claims, and Mr. Kaim's encounter highlights the issue of quotas eroding public trust. Mr. Kaim handled the situation well, earning an A for staying calm, challenging the deputy's actions, and emphasizing road safety. It is suggested that he gains a deeper understanding of the right to remain silent and the citizen complaint process. Okay, most Texans don't go 60, I they go 80. I know, but I originally <laughs> kind of like to keep a little bit extra safe distance uh, behind the car because you have that back. people would stop erratically, you know. Okay. Any... All right, like I said, you're just gonna get a warning. What I'm gonna have you do is hop out, hop into my passenger seat while I type warning? that out. Was that? Warning? A warning, yeah. What? For your driving behavior. My driving behavior was absolutely perfect. Okay, if that's what you believe, that's fine. You're just getting a warning. I'm not giving no, you a I ticket. Know, but, uh, I don't understand what was the... I have to document my stops, okay? And I'm giving you a warning. I was making sure you're not intoxicated. You want to do the no, no, I don't believe you're intoxicated this time, which is why I'm getting you a warning to get okay. you out of here. I have to document... But, uh, does it go on the record? No. Okay. All right, so I'm going to have you hop out, hop into my passenger seat, of the vehicle while I type out your warning so I can get it to you, okay?